Greetings, adventurers, and welcome back to the Den of the Drake. Other dragons hoard gold while I hoard internet cringe. Hope you've all been having a good day because I'm about to ruin it. Yes, dear listener, when you do what I do for a living after a while, you tend to build a sort of callus to human depravity on your soul. So much so that a lot of the stories begin to blend together in a sort of toxic goop that resembles what James Corden secretes from his fat rolls. But every once in a while, a particularly unique story will poke its head above the pool and say, Hey, look at me. It's not the kind of look at me that you'd find in an inspiring underdog story, oh no. It's the kind of look at me that you'd find from the guy behind an Arby's wearing nothing but a loose-fitting trench coat. The story I have for you today stars a player who got struck with DM fever, only for one of their players to display all of the best traits a problem player can have, but with the lovely addition of bringing their <clears throat> enthusiasm towards a certain part of the female anatomy to the table and even goes as far as to act on it in front of their own girlfriend. Yeah, I had eaten a good breakfast this morning, but after reading this one, it's now sitting on the floor in my recording booth. Now, without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right into the horrifying world of r slash RPG horror stories. Enjoy. This week's story is written by a throwaway account and is titled, A Player Brings His Fetish to the Table. And it goes poorly. Very, very poorly. Like this needs a trigger warning for sexual assault in its header poorly. So a couple months ago, I was struck with DM fever and decided to write and run a campaign. So I sent out a message on my university's Discord, and by the end of the day, a good number of people had DM'd me. I gathered them all up, we aligned our schedules, and made their characters. And by session zero, it seemed that I had a good functional group to play through my campaign. At the table, we had, names changed, obviously, Cappy, a longtime friend of mine playing what can only be described as a monster-hunting Australian femboy tiefling artificer named Bunsen Burner. She is 5'10". This is relevant to the story. Rat, our problem player. I'll get to his character in a second. Cat, Rat's IRL girlfriend, and a human rogue named Lady Night Stalker. Edgy, I know, but she's generally good in game. Dog, also a good friend playing a female half orc monk named Muzgonk, who had a cool backstory. Not that important to the story, but a cool guy overall. Rabbit, also not very relevant, but a very sweet person nonetheless. She's playing a Kanku warlock named Misty Song. Everyone at the table had a good bit of experience with D&D. So you would think that the creation of everyone's character went pretty smoothly, right? Wrong. Rat was constantly fighting for more power than I would allow even a 5th level character to have. I let each of them start with a magic item of their own creation for plot reasons, and everyone chose something important to their character with some minor effect. Except for Rat. He wanted some stupid powerful stuff for first level. An example, a ring that could transform into any simple or martial weapon as a bonus action. Gauntlets that gave plus 5 to AC, etc, etc. I kept having to tell him no. Even when I told him that the campaign wouldn't even be all that combat focused, and that even lower powered characters would do just fine, he just refused to listen. Whatever then. Everyone comes to the table for a different reason. I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong with power gaming in my opinion. I'll just scale up the encounters up a little bit, and on and on go the excuses in my head. Even though I know that this is a red flag. Eventually, we settle on a high elf druid named Apex, with tentacle tattoos that can be animated and used on account of him being the descendant of a sea god. Still a little overpowered, especially with his high stats, but we move on. Play starts, and the players all have a good time. The three sessions comprising the first adventure of the campaign play out nicely, ending with them blowing up a giant desert starfish that had been terrorizing a nearby town. But the cracks have already started to show with Rat. For one, he's impatient. 
He will regularly try to interrupt me or others when we speak any more than three or four consecutive sentences, and will sometimes even tell me to hurry up with my descriptions of scenes and events. After a while though, everyone just learns to shoot him an annoyed look or to just completely ignore him when he interrupts, and he stops after I tell him not to tell me to hurry up. It's annoying but manageable, and we were all still having a good time playing the game. But then there's his other BS. Rat would do this thing where he would roll, see a bad result, and then keep re-rolling until he got something good, and then try to convince me to take that one. It wasn't anything sneaky, he did it clearly out in the open, but his constant whining whenever he got a bad roll was so annoying, and again I just had to learn to ignore him and take the first roll when he did so. Rat also had a problem with the way I talk. I'm African American, and whenever I'm in a casual setting like at the table with friends, I tend to slip into using AAVE, a more colloquial and less grammatically correct, I have issues with this statement but that's not important, dialect of general American English. Now when I was describing settings or voice acting NPCs, I would always use a standard fantasy narration way of speaking to which Rat would often stay quiet, but whenever I spoke out of character, Rat would constantly correct my grammar. Ain't is not a word. It's got to, not gotta. I hate when people use bad grammar, lol. Things like that. This was a massive red flag to me, and I'm really stupid for not acting on it. I knew that those comments were usually an attempt at an underhanded racist attack and I still let them go on anyways. His behavior got him a lot of glares and snide remarks, especially since this table was about 40% black, but it was never actually addressed, and any time he did it, the table would just fall silent for a second before picking up conversation again. Of course, other players had their problems, and I don't want to seem like I was unfairly pointing out this flaw from the start. I wanted to give everyone a chance and actually ended up talking with other players to make the table a better place to play. For example, Cappy and Rabbit had a habit of going on a bit too long about things like battle formations and ended up slowing down the combat, but after a short talk with both of them we managed to come to a happy medium that let them live out their tactical battles and sped up combat considerably. The difference between them and Rat, however, is that they were just so approachable where they would listen and have a pleasant conversation about the game we play for fun, Rat would whine and complain and fight to get his way, and in the end he just became too exhausting to confront on most things. So in most RPG horror stories, the main point of conflict can easily be solved with the simple act of just airing your grievances before they boil over. Believe it or not, but most people don't want to be annoying. Imagine that! So the question remains, why are most people I interact with so damn annoying? Well, the realistic answer is because I'm a cynical piece of garbage with a stick so far up his ass that kissing me would taste like pine resin. But that would require me to have the slightest shred of self-awareness, which is something I refuse to do. So instead, we're gonna dive into how we can change the rest of the world to satisfy me. So what happens when telling someone that they're being annoying is, in itself, more annoying than it's actually worth? Well, it's time to evaluate your relationship with that person. There is nothing wrong with just simply choosing to not interact with some people, and that's really not a selfish thing to say. Beneath the whole snarky, arrogant, cartoon dragon shtick I put on for YouTube, I actually have a pretty deep flaw where I feel like I need to be friends with everyone, even if it affects me negatively. I'm working on it, but the cold hard reality is that there are just some people out there that are just inherently toxic to you as an individual. And no matter how many times you tell them to stop what they're doing, or think about what they're saying, it's just not gonna work out. Am I telling you to cut out anyone in your life who remotely disagrees with you on anything? No. The last thing I want to see is more social media posts of people typing up some variation of, If you don't agree with me on blank, then just unfriend me. Look. The key to happiness comes when your default frame of mind is to love your neighbor. 
but also not being afraid to tell your neighbor to piss off if they keep letting their dog crap on your lawn after you already told them to bring doggy bags on their morning walk. F*** you, Ted. I don't care if it's a purebred. If you let that little chihuahua of yours crap on my lawn one more time, I'm gonna punt the little rat into the f***ing sun. What are we talking about again? Oh, right. This is an RPG horror story video. My bad. But I haven't mentioned Rat's worst personality trait. The one that would start most of the overt drama. Every chance he got, Rat would make Apex declare loudly how much he loves a tall woman with a fat ass. Every chance he got. And he would say that exact phrase too, without any real variation. Every session, half his dialogue was just, You see that tall woman with a fat ass? I love a tall woman with a fat ass. Does this town have tall women with fat asses? And so on and so forth. The table had no problem with profanity or sexually suggestive dialogue at the table. But the constant repetition of this phrase became like an annoying meme to the rest of us. I'm aware that he was quoting an anime. All of us were. And Dog even got Muzong to respond with a handshake and a brother on the first couple of times, but it got old really fast. The real problem started when he started saying it out of character. I mean, before we had even taken out our dice, he would be saying it. And well, after we had wrapped it up, he'd be saying it. And in Discord, he'd be saying it. It became clear after a few sessions that his love of tall women with fat asses was not just for roleplay, and every time he said it, he'd turn his head like clockwork and look directly at Cappy, who, and I saw this from the perspective of a creep, fit the description. One might, upon reading this, be confused and scroll back up a bit. I'll save you the trouble. Cat, Rat's IRL girlfriend and human rogue named Lady Nightstalker. Cat, Rat's IRL girlfriend. Cat. Rat's IRL girlfriend. Yeah, he was doing this in front of her. And every time it would play out the exact same way. He would say his thing and turn his head to give a suggestive look. Cappy would look right back at him with a blank, nondescript stare. They would maintain eye contact until Rat broke it. And Cat would sit there the whole time lazily looking at Rat, as if she weren't watching her boyfriend make passes at another woman. All in complete silence. Eventually, I talked to Cappy privately, and being the impossibly chill person that she is, said that it was only a slight annoyance and that she really didn't need anyone to talk to Rat about it. I was kind of apprehensive, but given how the main target of Rat's advances said she was fine, I let it go. I know, that was dumb, and I should have at least told Rat that he was making me, if not Cappy, uncomfortable. But hindsight is 2020, am I right? As the campaign went on, Rat's advances towards Cappy got more and more direct. He asked for her socials, all of them, in the middle of the game. Then upon being told that it wasn't appropriate for the moment, covered up by asking everyone else for theirs as well. Hence the throwaway. He complimented her on her looks and leered at her, trying to do that weird weeb thing where they pretend overtly to be a pervert as some kind of character, but it only makes them look like a massive creep in real life. Sometimes he also just verbally attacked her when she didn't fit his image of a perfect woman, which I didn't think extended beyond tall and thick. When Cappy was commenting on how cute she thought Rabbit was, Rat made a comment about how Girls get to call each other cute, but when guys do it, it's gay. It should be gay for girls too. When Cappy responded that she is, in fact, bisexual, his response was that he doesn't believe in that stuff, but okay. He also made a remark about how he hates it when people don't act like their gender obviously aimed at her. Cappy is a self-proclaimed and widely recognized tomboy, who aimed to dress like a 90s West Coast rapper in her words. She is also playing a feminine male character, which was really funny, but apparently outrageous to Rat, apparently. And all the while, he keeps saying his signature line, 
even more frequently than ever before, equally in and out of character. Tall woman, fat ass. Tall woman, fat ass. Tall woman, fat ass. Every day, any time anyone tries talking to him. This entire time, as Rat gets more and more out of line, Cat does nothing. Dog and I eventually talk to her, and she gets a bit offended and basically tells us that her boyfriend can do as he pleases. We drop it and move on. Apparently though, and we only found this out a couple hours ago, the two of them rode the same bus Cappy took to her internship, and Rat had started sitting with her. That alone hadn't bothered her all that much, but he would loudly talk about how much he loved fat ass and everything related to it there, where other people could clearly hear it, and Cappy basically would try her best to pretend that she was not associated with him for 45 straight minutes. Cappy, however, still insists that this behavior was not something to disrupt the game over, and we kept playing. And that brings us to yesterday. Since our schedules were completely screwed up for February, it would be our last session for the entire month. Thus, I ran my Valentine's Day session early. The premise was simple. The party would be brought into a mass dream, where a goddess of love was holding a tournament of power to see who had the strongest romantic bond. The players and NPCs would go on two on two rounds, until the strongest love prevailed, and won a neat prize. The party was immediately hooked on the idea and paired off. Rabbit and Dog, who were doing a little bit of an in-character romance plot, got together. I then assumed that Rat and Cat, the IRL couple, would pair off as well, and Cappy would get an NPC lady from her hometown that she had been eyeing. This did not happen. Rat didn't even look at Cat, instead opting to call Cappy. Not Bunsen, mind you. Cappy. Cappy casually agreed to this, and it was Cat who was paired off with an NPC which she did not seem at all upset about. So we gather around the table. A couple rounds go by. We're all starting to get a good look at the tournament sheet and map. And then, slowly but clear as day, Rat reaches over and squeezes Cappy's butt. Everyone had seen it, and the reaction was immediate. Cappy immediately spun and pulled away, but it was only until she swung at Rat did he let go. Rabbit was yelling and threatening to call someone and Cat was arguing with her, telling her not to. Dog would have punched him if he hadn't fallen off the table trying to scramble over it. I got between Rat and Cappy, who was furiously hitting and kicking him, and told him that he needed to leave immediately and that he was no longer welcome. He tried to stumble out some kind of response, but soon grabbed his stuff and sped out the door. Cat, however, stayed and tried to berate us for overreacting like that. None of us were having it, and she too was booted, although she had to be physically backed out the door and continued yelling outside for a good while after that. After that, it was just the four of us. In all the years that I've known her, I've never seen the normally so completely unexcitable Cappy so furious. She even wanted to forego calling the relevant campus authorities to instead just beat the hell out of Rat, which Dog was looking ready to agree. As much as I felt for her on that, we probably would be punished for doing that. After taking a while to calm down, we reported the entire event and everyone went home. And that brings us to now. Both Rat and Cat have been banned from the Discord, and we have not gotten contact from the campus. The rest of us decided to just take a break, since we weren't going to be playing for the rest of the month anyway, and figure out what to do about the game. We still want to continue the game, and even though Cappy is still massively upset, she said she doesn't want the campaign to end, and that we should find new people to play with later on. I'm not so sure, however, and have kind of been turned off to DMing for the moment by this entire situation. Although that may be because it just happened. Either way, I saw a lot of red flags that I probably shouldn't have ignored, and will probably be super wary of anyone who may join our game next. TLDR, a player constantly talks about his fetish, and tries to court another player. He caps off his creepy power gamer behavior with IRL sexual assault. End of story. 
Oh my god, these poor women. Cappy for obvious reasons, I mean no one deserves to have their personal space violated like that. But I'm actually kind of feeling bad for Cat too. I mean what kind of manipulation do you need to be put through to watch your boyfriend grab another chick's ass and then defend him afterwards? Rats gotta have some hypno-toad powers or something. Because if I watched my boyfriend grab a handful of a woman who wasn't me, there would not be a force on planet Earth that would make me want to stay with his ass. Never mind defend it. Still doesn't excuse her behavior though. Look, an attraction to, uh, well-proportioned people is something that I'm sure most people can relate to. But for the love of God, learn some self-control. That handful that you're about to get yourself is never going to be worth the consequences of what's going to happen to you afterwards. Not to mention that you're doing it to another human being and the effects it'll have on them. Rat deserves everything that happened to him, and probably more. As if the casual sexism and racism wasn't enough, he had to sprinkle in a pinch of assault. Now it's not often that we find a problem player that's 100% irredeemable, but here we are. Now, gotta might not be a word to Mr. Rat here, but I got a handful of words that I think he'll understand just fine. Stop obsessing over women with fat asses and instead go outside and touch some grasses. And on that note, let's go ahead and take a look at this week's Gallery of the Drake. This week's fan art comes from viewer Saikura, and depicts myself displaying the perfect balance of showmanship and grating narcissism that we've all come to expect at this point. Ma'am, we would like you to pick out the person you saw fleeing the crime scene from this lineup. Wait, I have an idea. <clears throat> Other dragons hoard gold while I hoard internet cringe. <sighs> That's him, officer. Oh, god damn it! Thank you again, Saikura, for submitting your art. If you'd like to see your fan art featured in Gallery of the Drake, be sure to send it to the email in my about section. Fan art is my favorite part of doing YouTube, and it means the world to me that I can inspire artists like you to create artwork like this. With the story over and artwork displayed, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you feel like supporting the channel further, my Patreon and merchandise links are in the description. I would like to thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you next time in the Den of the Drake.